Hey, What's we're up, live. guys? Woohoo! Happy Tuesday, Happy guys. Happy Tuesday, guys. So we're going to be talking about faith and fear and how fear is having a has a chokehold on your business, right? And we can speak from experience because we've definitely had that happening. So first off, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, today uh, we took our son to school. Our first day and Matt and I got to go together. We've got to go together pretty much his whole school um, career, every, every first day of school, we've both gotten to go since we both work from home. And, um, it's, it's a joy and it's just really, uh, I'm really grateful for it. But the thing that's kind of interesting is we tried to take this family picture and like we, we were kind of looking into the sun and so Matt was blinking and I was squinting or like this kind of look, you know, and <laughs> we all looked kind of crazy. And what it struck me as is like, but that's what life looks like, right? No matter how amazing it is and how wonderful it is, sometimes it doesn't look the way you think it will, right? It doesn't look like that perfect life, but it's amazing and how like grateful and just really excited and happy I am that I have that opportunity, that I have the opportunity to take my son to school, but not just me. You know, you, we go there and there's a lot of moms, right? There's a lot of moms with our kids. There's not a lot of dads. And it was just so cool. There were a couple, but it's so cool that Matt's there all the time. And that's, that's the kind of stuff, you know, that's why we want to talk to you about this stuff. Um, specifically, um, what I've been noticing as I coach people is mindset. Mindset is the difference between success and not, right? Because um, specifically like in our course that we have, I teach the same stuff and even more. Then I taught to uh, one of my clients who sells over a hundred thousand dollars a month. So, like, okay, if you have the same information, right, and you have you work, you're willing to work, you know, do what it takes. Then what's the difference, right? Because definitely for us, when we started, we started at the same exact time as someone else, and he was outselling us by three times within the first few months. You know what I mean? Like, I remember we were so relieved to get to say 10,000. He was at 30,000. Like, he was always further ahead. And I was like, why? How is that possible? Because we had the same training, right? And it's because he, his mindset with that training just took him to where he was more successful fast. And so the more we worked on our mindset, and even now today, the more I work on my mindset, the more successful I am. Um, as far as bringing in money, but besides that is enjoying my life and enjoying my day-to-day -day activities. I was just on a training this morning and she was talking about success, right? So everybody defines success or most people do as lots of money, but what if it's not? What if it's being able to be there to take your kid to school? What if that is your ultimate success, right? What if that means like that you didn't miss a day in their life? that that was your ultimate success, right? I mean, the money can is is great, but it's like if we focus so hard on it, sometimes it it basically almost repels it. <laughs> so the things that you can be successful for that you're successful with right now, celebrate all of that and enjoy it because honestly, if I was on my deathbed, you know, let's say I'm 90 years old on my deathbed, I have 10 million dollars and nobody there that loves me or gives a crap about me. I will have failed in my life. So you want to start really defining what is your, what's successful for you. So let's talk about faith. Well and said. Fear. Thanks. Let's talk about faith and fear. Um, both things, right, happen in the future. So like um, right now, you know what's happening and you can deal accordingly with what's happening. But what, what, what kind of happens is, is it's the possibility. It's what's going to come. It's the future. No one can tell the future. And so you can either come at it with faith or with fear. And specifically with the Amazon business, what we found is sometimes people, they get so hung up. They're like, oh, but I'll be restricted in this brand. And what if this, what if I get a cease and desist letter? Or what if, um, what if I get my account suspended? Or, uh, you know what I mean? It's like this continual fear state that people are living in. And then they're attempting to do their Amazon business. And it's like choking their business. Like, <laughs> you know, and so the thing is, even if something happens, you having been fearful of it for two, three, four, five months, a year, two years, however long it was, right? 
isn't going to help you at that moment. I can tell you from experience because we've been suspended a couple times and it would, and again, when I looked at it, it was mindset. It was me. I had knowledge that I could have changed it, but I, I believed wrong things. I was listening to wrong people and I, um, didn't take in, uh, what I needed to know to protect my account. So when I started doing the trainings, I've put everything in there that I know how to do to help you guys keep your account safe. But I can tell you from experience, we had an account suspended and I wasn't like, oh good, I'm glad I was scared for the previous year before this that this was going to happen because now I'm so prepared. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> it was awful. And, but the fear, all that fear was there was no reason for it. It was just a waste. And I'll even go one step further. If I had been coming at it from faith and being like, you know what? The, life is happening for me. What happens is something that I need to learn or something that I'm moving through. And, you know, like the universe, God, whatever you want to say, is taking care of me. If I had lived in that, I would have had that whole year of like less stress, more ease, more fun. And even if, because I do know somebody who has an amazing mindset and they did get suspended and they were like, yeah, well, I'm sure we'll get it handled. Who's the best person to help us with this? And, you know, it's like you refer them, they work with them, they got their account back, boom. Um, because it was, sometimes things happen, right? But if you have a uh, faith mindset, like that you feel like it's going to work out, it can even help you in that you find that you're listening to the right people, that you are taking the correct actions. Because the more faith that you have that things are going to work out, that it's working out for you right now as we speak, the better you feel and the more you're able to take action, the appropriate actions, the best actions. And that's really, truly, I look back at the two suspensions and I know for a fact that if we had different mindsets, they wouldn't have even happened. So that's one of the reasons we want to talk about mindset with you guys because it is so key. It is crucial for your Amazon business. It is crucial for your life. And we don't, you know, it, it's, so it's just a simple choice. Faith or fear, because it's all about the future and you get to pick one or the other because you can't hold them both at the same time. <laughs> Sorry, I like, la, ba, ba, ba. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. So guys, uh, did you hear the news about the auto approval for brands like Nike, Nike, Jordan, um, other brands as well? Yeah, so, so we've had people who've said that they, they have uh, gotten approved. So here's the deal. Anytime you guys are sourcing, especially if you're on a list, always click rep request approval every single time. Request approval, request approval, request approval. Um, couple of things. The only way I know to do that is on Seller Central. Um, just because you were denied in a brand once doesn't mean you should do it again or like you should do it every time for different ASINs, right? Because what I have found is there are some Nike ASINs that like I can't sell, but there's a whole bunch that I can sell. So if you guys hit on the ASIN that people can sell, you're more likely to be approved into selling that. And then as you are going to list other things, you uh, wouldn't have to necessarily hit approval. You'll be approved in, in the ones that are the sellers are selling, if that makes sense. Yeah. And would you say that having an experience as a seller, like showing in a rapport with history with Amazon helps your ability to get approved um, in selling brands and certain products? I would, and this is the thing. I know some people, they get in here, they get brand new, and they're like, I must get ungated and everything. And I really don't recommend that. What I recommend doing is I recommend going after, um, like doing your Amazon business to the best of your ability, taking care of customers, managing your feedback, you know what I mean? Like being on top of your account, showing Amazon that you guys are professional sellers, that you are taking care of their customers. And then over time, it becomes easier and easier to get ungated in things because you have a history, you have a track record. And all of a sudden it's like, boom, hey, uh, I clicked request approval and I was approved. I, click, I, I did it again and now I'm approved in this. Like so much of what we click request approval in, we are approved in automatically. Um, and it'll happen for you guys too, but you've gotta get in there and sell. And I don't recommend just trying to get engated in the very first go round. I fo recommend focusing on what you can source, sourcing the crap out of it and getting a bunch of stuff in there sold and the customers taken care of. So yeah. we have a question. What book or video do you recommend to help with mindset? 
Oh, that's funny you mentioned that. <laughs> that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. Uh, how many of you guys have read, and this is backwards, Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz? So the answer to your question, um, was it Crystal? Mm -hmm. You know, that's a good question. You know, sometimes I think, for me anyway, I have to search my soul, you know, a little bit and just kind of ask, what is it that I need to learn right now? Or where am I stopped in my life right now? What's like a good thing? So like, you know, are your relationships suffering? Suffering? Maybe you need to look at, you know, developing yourself with your relationships. Um, is it your money? You know, do you feel like there's, there's blocks with money? Uh, you can go there. Um, and then obviously, you know, going to mentorship, you know, people who've been there and done that. Uh, and if they're, you know, you meet somebody who's done something that you want to do and you talk to them and you say, hey, what books do you recommend, you know, that helped you get to where you want to be? But uh, this book was recommended to us, uh, Psycho Cybernetics, years ago. This is a great book. Okay, so the, to understand the concept, what Maxwell Maltz is talking about, he's talking about the self-image, the image of self. So if you understand, if you understand this, guys, this is huge. This can be amazingly huge for you. It's the idea of the subconscious mind and it works in the form of images. Now, the subconscious mind, okay, is working for you. Automatically, you don't have to think about it. Your nails are growing, your heart is beating, and your lungs are working all because of your subconscious mind. Like Sherry was talking about earlier, about something working for you, right? Whatever you call that mysterious force. You know, you could call it the subconscious mind as far as your own physical body. The, the subconscious mind works in the form of images. So the way that it works is it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of dumb in a certain way in, in that it's a calculator. It's like a calculator, right? You get a calculator, you type in 364 times 812, boom, it's going to come up with an answer, right? But the calculator can't think for itself and like start typing in its own numbers, right? It can only do what it's programmed to do, what it's told to do, what it's commanded to do. And that's the way your subconscious mind works. And when you think about images and the way that the subconscious mind works on images, what it's imagining happening. So there was a skier, uh, what they found is they put him up to the neurotransmitters in the brain and stuff, and they had him ski down the hill, but in his mind, not actually skiing. And what they found was the same uh, neurotransmitters were firing just as if he was skiing down the hill himself. So he was just imagining it. But the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference. The subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's imagined. So he's skiing down the hill in his mind and his, mind, and his subconscious mind thinks that it's happening. It's real. You know, it's like when you're watching a movie. I used to do watch a movie with my dad and he'd be like, <laughs> you know, and like Saving Private Ryan or something like he was there, you know, it's because of the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind can't tell the difference. So. In this book, Psycho-Cybernetics, to talk about the image of self, right? Because you have an image of you. We all have an image of ourselves. And the subconscious mind is being programmed with that, and it's responding to that, and it's acting according to that. So uh, if you imagine yourself as, say, whatever it is for you, you know, a multi-million dollar Amazon seller, who you check your Amazon sale, you know, your phone app, and you see... It's 7 a.m. and there's $7,000 in sales, right? That's an, that's an image of you, right? Image of you that, that that's you. You're, you're the person holding this phone and you're the person that's living this experience. Maybe you're sitting by the pool sipping on a margarita it's at 7, 7 in the morning, okay? You've really Yeah, so you have a life. big Amazon business <laughs> and you have a drinking problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway... Uh, so you've imagined the self, and now what the way the subconscious mind is not just imagery, but it's repetitive imagery. So it's what you keep programming into yourself over and over and over until you begin, this person that you've imagined essentially becomes the person that you are. Yeah. Yeah, and the minute that you imagine it, you actually are vibrationally, okay, this is going to sound strange, but you're vibrationally in alignment with what you've been imagining. That's powerful stuff. This is the stuff that people are not necessarily doing, that if they did this stuff, they would see miraculous changes in their life. Yeah, it's the mantras too. It's the things that you repeat um, over and over to yourself, right? So like, let's say you spill milk. What's, what comes out of your mouth? Do you say things like, oh my God, I'm so clumsy. 
or ah, I can't believe I did that again. You know what I mean? Like, or do you just, so it, it's things that happen like, like that. You'll say things unintentionally. And sometimes I'll say them too. And I'll like, Oh, <laughs> I can't believe that's still in there. Right. And then, then I work on it, but it's the mantras that you say repetitively. Um, that's the, they, they go with your image of yourself, right? Like, are you a screw up? Are you, um, do you, you make mistakes all the time or, or are you really successful and really smart and on top of it all? Like, you know what I mean? Um, so however, whatever you're continually saying, even if just in your head, that's what happens. I had a friend and he, um, said all through high school, he was a tall, thin kid but he pictured himself as like a kind of fat guy because that was kind of his, um, his, where his self-esteem was. That's how he felt. Like he was just a big fat guy. And, and inevitably by the time he was in his twenties, he was kind of a big fat guy. <laughs> and he was like, and I, it's so funny because I look exactly today the way I used to picture myself in high school. He's like, but I look back at my high school pictures and I was a tall, thin guy. So it really does. I mean, it can go both ways. It can go, but it's, it's watching what you're thinking. It's watching what you are continually feeding your mind, your brain. And that's a great example of the quote, as you sow, so shall you reap. Because those ideas were planted in the mind. It wasn't immediate, right? It takes a little bit of time, but it begins to grow into something. So the thoughts that you're thinking today are growing into something later down the road. Yeah. So... This is so key because you guys have an opportunity to imagine yourselves as a million dollar Amazon seller, to imagine sales rolling in continually, to imagine waking up and being like, oh, there's so many Amazon shipped item you sold notifications, I can't count them. <laughs> you know, um, whatever it is for you guys, because once you have the mindset going, the actions become easier and they become almost guided because your brain is taking in millions of pieces of information every day. And so you don't go insane. It doesn't like bombard you with all that millions of information. It only shows you the things that match your beliefs from your subconscious to help reinforce that and help you along. So the more that your subconscious is like, yes, I am successful. Yes, this is an amazing life. Yes, my Amazon business is amazing. Yes, my life is happening for me and is perfect for me. Like then your brain will be looking for more of that. It's like, um, I went to Dis I was going to Disneyland and I mentioned it to somebody and they're like, oh my gosh, that is so horrible. Every time I've been to Disneyland, it's been so awful. Parents are so mean to their kids and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I must be going to the wrong place because I don't, that's not part of what I believe or think. So what I see are like happiness is happiness and joyful people. And yeah, sometimes some tired, cranky kids, but just like, I see a whole different thing, right? And we're going to the same park. <laughs> so that's it from, from small things all the way up to big things, to your marriage, to your relationships, like with your kids, to your family, to your business. This mindset stuff is the thing that shifts you from successful or not. Yeah. Let's see what Eddie's got here. What's wrong with the drinking problem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, hey. Hey. Hey, if you want to sip on a margarita at 7 in the morning, <laughs> who am I to say, right? <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> okay, cool, guys. So, um, one more announcement before we go. And if anybody has questions, feel free to type them in. Um, we <laughs> are going to be doing a uh, webinar for our lists. So anybody who is a subscriber to our list. Yeah, we apologize. We meant to send that out Friday. It just didn't get done. So we're going to we reschedule it. So anybody who's waiting on that, sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, link or name of the book. So the name of the book is Psycho Cybernetics. Yeah, by Maxwell Maltz. Yeah, I'll put a link uh, yeah, in the uh, comments. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and one other thing actually before we is uh, You Can Heal Your Life. It's on YouTube. Not you, you can heal your life. You are born rich. <laughs> you can heal your life is good, but you are born rich. That was actually the, the guy that we talk about a lot. Um, that's what he recommended to us because it was like, what? How is that possible? And it, it starts expanding your mind. It starts expanding what's possible. So 
I have found the more awesome stuff I take in, the more awesome this works and the, the better my life looks, the better it is. So I thank you guys for hanging out with us about this because um, I can teach you guys the stuff to do. And I have, like I said, we have in our course, I think we have like over 30 modules of things, but it, without this other stuff, it's real hard to, you know, people struggle, right? Okay. Yeah. So. There's a degree of self-awareness, degree of self-awareness. Uh, let's see. What'd you say? You can heal yeah, your yeah. life. Is your future's best self seller. Oh, oh well, you future. can hear your life is actually already written Oh yeah. <laughs> by yeah. Louise Sell. Hey. Thank you, Lisa, the, for the shirts. Yeah. Okay, so for the, anybody on our list, and if you guys are interested, uh, you guys can still join the... Yeah, the clothes Arbitrage list. Arbitrage Finds yeah. Clothes and Shoes list. And we are going to be doing a webinar on 12 noon Pacific Thursday. Um, and we're going to just go through. I'm going to show you guys how I source a list. I'm going to go through the... Um, how to track suppliers, spreadsheets, all that. Yeah, like how we figure out if a list is profitable over time. We're just going to really talk about that. And so it's going to be a whole training. Um, and it will go out through the email um, for anybody who's on our list. So if you guys uh, will put a link for that as well. Yeah. And cool, guys. This yeah. was, I really enjoy talking to you guys. Thank you so much for showing up. Thank you for being here. And thank you for being in our group. We feel really grateful to be able to talk to you guys every Tuesday. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, hey, have a great Tuesday. Have a great week. And uh, we'll see you guys in the group. See ya. All right. Take care, guys.